Hello, and welcome to Portsmouth This Week. I'm your host, Conley Zani. This show is under the auspices of Rich Rayner, our Portsmouth Town Administrator. Together, Rich, myself, and the entire Portsmouth This Week team are on a mission to build community. We do that by bringing you accurate and timely information about the issues that impact you. We introduce you to your neighbors, the personalities, the faces, the leaders in our community that make up the fabric of this magical place to live. As many of you know, we have a special election coming up on November 2nd. There are two issues on the ballot. One is about our schools and investing in health and safety measures. And the second is about the future of our senior center. Today, my guest is Christian Belden. He is the executive director of Church Community Housing. Christian, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you are here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So Church Community Housing is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to um, provide affordable housing. Is that correct? That's correct. That is great. And I came to your session at the Portsmouth High School where you generously came to share the vision of what this might be. And I was so moved by your story of how you got into this space. Would you tell our viewers that? Sure. Yes, yeah, so let's just start with that so we get to know you. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I went to uh, my master's degree in everything, so I was interested in, in use and zoning um, development. And I've worked on both sides of the development table, both um, as a planner. Um, and as a developer, um, but I think what you're referring to is, uh, you know, my experience with my grandparents who are f were f from Portsmouth and moved to Florida, um, largely because you know the cost of living in Florida was yeah. was lower. And um, my grandfather passed away, and then my grandmother was in Florida by herself, and you know we went and visited pretty regularly and had talked about her moving up to uh, Rhode Island to, you know, so that we could have her closer by and be able to um, be there if she needed us. But before that could happen, um, she fell getting out of the shower. And um, it wasn't until the next day that an aide found her. And she ended up passing away from uh, that injury. And you know, this came about, it was in the video that we created for the presentation for the Portsmouth High School, um, because one of the residents that we were interviewing at one of our senior housing developments was saying that her family really feels better about having her living in the community where they're from, because they know that she's there in a development with other senior folks and the property management staff are there. and so. You know, they know if something were to happen, somebody would be there, would take notice, um, and it, it keeps uh, her closer to her family as well. And so that, that's how that uh, story came about. I generally don't try to use my personal family stories to, you know, advocate our position on things, but it's true. I, you I, you I, were living it. Yeah, you I mean, I, 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 I've said, like, there are quantitative and qualitative uh, reasons for affordable housing and you know the the quantitative is um, the, you know things that people don't think of often which is like the, if a family member moves away the cost to go and visit them but the qualitative of, are the is that loss of community and the, the loss of um, connections to family and friends and that support system that exists for members of a community that have lived there for decades and what can happen when you're not in, living in that community anymore and how that particularly can make um, you know, uh, senior members of the community vulnerable. Yeah, so church community housing, this mission is you're, you're trying to build community and, and fix this issue, right? And, and how long has it been around? Tell me a little bit about the organization so that yeah, so Church Community Housing was created in 1969 by a consortium of local churches who saw that their members were living in squalid living conditions and really wanted to do something about that. But very quickly they realized that in order to be able to access federal funds, they needed to 
create a uh, nonprofit 501c3 organization that was you know not related to a religious organization because of the separation of church and state and so that's how church community housing was created so we've been around for 52 years and have developed over a thousand units of housing in newport county over during that time well and there are some even in portsmouth right yeah um this is not the first redevelopment of a school building that we've done um, Anthony House in Portsmouth, just right. behind Town Hall, right. is a former school building that's now 70 units of elderly housing. Um, Mumford Manor in Newport on Fair Farewell Street is the former Mumford School. That's also uh, an elderly housing development. Um, so, yeah, we um, uh, have developed, uh, uh, we really pride ourselves on creating developments that become genuine resources to the community that serve community needs um, and enhance the community and neighborhood that they're in. Well, it was very clear in the video that you showed at the high school um, meeting, and we're going to hopefully be able to put a link to that video, to your video, mm -hmm in our own YouTube channel so that people can link there and see it and I would encourage everybody to go do that because it was really moving um, and residents were very very happy yeah I that the reason for the video was that when we first started working with the senior center advisory group which I think we'll talk about later um, we gave them a tour of our properties and had them meet our residents so that they knew what it was that we developed and who our, our clients, our tenants were. Right. Um, and they said that it was really helpful and they were actually the ones that suggested that we create a video because obviously we can't give every Portsmouth resident a tour of all of our properties and introduce them to all of our residents. And so that's why we created that video. And you know, believe it or not, everybody that was interviewed, um, all of those residents, we talked to the property management company the day before, and those were just the people that were happened to be available at yeah. that time. They were not cherry picked. Um, that's just, and I, it was really great for me to see. Like right. these are our residents; they're very happy here. They say very good things about the property management company, um, and they really, you know, advocate for the the need for more uh, senior affordable housing because you know, without it, they would be living somewhere else and they really like where they're living. And right. um, quite frankly, it, it helps to preserve wealth. A lot of um, seniors, uh, you know, may have been living in a home that they raised their family in or have lived in for a long time. It, it might be paid off um, and they have a little nest egg. And because of the way that you qualify for affordable housing, it's based on income eligibility. And so that asset isn't really taken into account when you apply for an apartment in one of our developments. But we, um, we design all of our units to help people age in place. So we have roll-in showers, we have turning radiuses in the kitchens and the bathrooms so that if you end up in a wheelchair, you can still stay in that apartment. We have all the windows or sliders so that instead of having to lift up a double hung window, yep, you, can. you can put your hand and use your body weight to open and close a sliding window. All the appliances have the knobs on the front of it so that if you're in a wheelchair, you can still continue to use that because everybody knows that once you move into a nursing home, it can drain that nest egg down to nothing very quickly. Nursing homes are incredibly expensive. And so one of the real genuine community benefits of having affordable senior housing is that it provides, especially if we've developed it, because we have expertise in ensuring that they allow people to age in place, it, it ensures that the, the nest egg that this family has built up during their lifetime is preserved and that that you know, drain down that happens in nursing homes can be um, forestalled for as long as possible. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was it was really incredible to watch. So I'm hoping our viewers can can look at that. Yeah. So um, let's talk about this advisory group. Let's talk a little bit about the process, mm -hmm. right? Because I I am hoping that after watching the show, we've we've got some folks that are concerned about this. Yep. So I want to try to allay some fears, and I think that starts with what has the process been? Who's been involved? When did it start? Can you shed a little light on that? Sure. Um, Originally, uh, Senator Sevigny and uh, Representative Kortrevind um, and Rich Rainer, the uh, town administrator, reached out to me and just asked for a tour of some of our properties. And so we brought them on a tour. And then, um, you know, it wasn't 
until uh, many months later, I think probably close to a year later, that they suggested, hey, you know, we, it looks like we have real problems with the Ann Hutchinson School building where the senior center is housed. Um, and, you know, is there something that you could do here? Would it be possible, you know, if we were to give you a long-term ground lease, for example, could you develop um, housing? Um, and uh, is there any potential for you to save the senior center, create a new senior center? Um, and so uh, when I started looking at it, I realized that there was really a very natural marriage between providing affordable senior housing and a senior center because almost all of the spaces that exist in the, in the senior center are all spaces that we typically build for every one of our senior housing developments. And so it, it was a very natural marriage of uses. And so I was immediately interested and we worked to put together a memorandum of understanding that gives us um, five years to try to develop this plan to save the senior center and provide housing. Um, and, and then it was actually my suggestion that the town create an advisory group because uh, whenever there's an, an us versus them um, environment, it, it just makes what we're doing that much harder. And since this was genuinely a partnership, the town approached us about it, asked us if there was something that we could do here to help out. I thought, you know, let's, let's bring in members of the town, um, stakeholders, a and, and work together to create a plan to save the senior center and provide senior affordable housing. Right. Out, right, so my understanding is there was members of town leadership, there was senior center board members on this advisory group, there were residents, mm -hmm. um, so lots of different opinions and perspectives it sounds like. Yeah, it was the end of March of uh, this year actually that the town council appointed the members of the senior center advisory uh, group and it's, the, um, it's Kevin Aguiar, the town council president, Linda Ujifuza, the vice president of the council, um, Cindy Kaniki, the uh, director of the senior center, Helen Matthew, the uh, board chair for the senior center, Gary Crosby, the town planner, um, Brian Woodhead, the DPW director, and then there are three uh, residents, um, Claire Eklund, Ellen Downing, um, and Bruce Perry. Fantastic. Well, so you started in March, and this group's been working really, really hard. And um, yeah, I think we've met 12 times since then. And uh, initially, um, some of the members of that advisory group were in the opposition. They um, were very skeptical about uh, the town's motivations and our motivations. And I'm very happy to see that at this point they are all. Um, enthusiastically behind this and writing letters to the editor and um, including you know letters in the senior center um, newsletter saying that the senior center board of directors unanimously approved supporting this plan and that they are urging the senior center membership to vote yes on question number two um, you know I think it's just a testament to uh, working together like once yeah. you get to know each other and you realize like oh they really do want to give us a new senior center with all of the same uh, functions that we have in a, in a brand new state-of-the-art facility that's actually larger than the existing senior center building and you know that they, they want to save the historic Ann Hutchinson four-room schoolhouse and oh, the, the ball field that the town was planning on moving somewhere else because they didn't think that we could, we would have enough space to do all this on one site. You know, th they're now looking to relocate it on the same site so that you can have children on the same development as the elderly. So Sounds that, fantastic. So that the residents, you know, can look out of their apartment window and see a ball field going on or come outside yeah. and sit in the bleachers. And, you know, a, we, and talking to, to Cindy and Helen, we believe that you know some, if not many, of the residents of the housing will be senior center membership, um, and that the residents will all become senior center members. So, right. you know, I just, to me, this development had so many 
factors that were really working in concert to make it a really great development and the kind that really motivates me to do what I do, which is to create a, a resource for the community that is, you know, a, a genuine attribute uh, that everybody will look to and say, you know, this is a good thing that we have this in our community. And, you know, it's funny because doing this work, what we're seeing here with the um, misinformation and uh, the uh, objectors, this happens every time we propose a development. Every time we're going for permitting, every time we're going before a town council, there are people that are saying, don't, don't put that in my neighborhood, don't develop. And then, once it's done, once it's complete, we never hear from them again. Because, uh, as you see in our, our video, we build, I think, really terrific developments that end up being some of the nicest, if not the nicest looking buildings in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, the, the residents are quiet, the traffic is minimal, um, you know, they're usually very nicely landscaped and the property management does a terrific job. And so, it, it, what happens is that people realize, like, oh, those fears I had were completely unfounded. Yeah. Like, this is a great facility, these are great people living there. Yeah. And, um, it's better. It's better. Yeah. And so this was clearly an opportunity to do the same thing in Portsmouth, which to me is really important because both sides of my family are from Portsmouth. My, right. uh, my grandparents, my mother grew up in Portsmouth, went to Portsmouth High School my, uh, on my father's side. He went to Portsmouth High School. They lived in the hummocks. Um, and I still have many of my you know, uncles and aunts still live in Portsmouth. I, the first place I lived was in Portsmouth. My grandfather. Um, Alan Belden was on the Portsmouth Zoning Board many, many years ago. And so for me, to be able to do Connected. something like this yeah. that, you know, I, I think my grandfather would be proud of is, you know, a really great thing. You know, it's not, people have jobs. This is what I have as an opportunity to be able to fulfill, so. Well, that is wonderful. So, hey. I have some glamour shots. All um, right. I almost feel like you queued it up just perfectly <laughs> for me. Um, so maybe we can uh, shift our camera here to this this um, beautiful rendering of what this might uh, ultimately look like. There we go. Yeah, that that is exactly what you're talking about, Christian. Where this this is going to represent a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, over, I think, the, the existing uh, center now and just for the neighborhood. Um, I see here we've got in over on the right, um, this, this is where the apartments are and where the new activity center for the seniors will be. And then over on the left here is uh, what we refer to as the old schoolhouse, which is mm -hmm. the historic portion of the senior center that we want to try to um, save really right. right and um, so the yellow portion on the right is the part that has the apartments mm -hmm. and how many were we talking about is it like 50 or yeah 50? It, it's it's between 50 and 55 okay mm -hmm. all right all right and I think then right now it's 54 uh, it could change by a few, but it's very likely to be right. Right, and now. this is going to be the affordi affordable housing for seniors. Correct. Yeah, there's right. been a, a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, those 50 plus apartments will be for seniors 55 years of age or older exclusively. And there is an application process. There is. Is there anything, will it be for Portsmouth seniors or not necessarily? Uh, uh, is there any way to? Yeah, we, we can't be, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, not exclusionary, but we, we can't discriminate. Um, however, it, if you watch the video of the tour of our, um, our developments, what you'll see is that um, people only want to live where they have a connection. Right. And so at Mumford Manor, we have uh, tenants there who went to school at right. Mumford School as right. children. The same is true at Anthony House. Um, but even folks that aren't from Portsmouth that end up living in our developments, they worked in that community for they have a decades. They, they, there is always a connection. Yeah. Um, 
And so, and the thing is, is, you know, while we can't discriminate and say people that who don't live in Portsmouth or not Portsmouth residents um, can't live here, if you don't build it, there is no affordable senior housing for Portsmouth residents. Right. And, you know, it's just the, the, the reality, because we've been doing this for 52 years, is that these ideas that, you know, uh, that people have about people coming from, you know, Providence or, you know, Massachusetts and coming to live in the, it just, it just doesn't happen. The, uh, these are members of the community who want to continue to live in the community and that's what this kind of housing provides. All right, fantastic. All right, well, I also want to talk about um, the, the space and what this is going to look like. I have here another shot. This is really a floor plan mm -hmm. of the proposed uh, new senior center that will be connected to these apartments. Yeah, I think it's important. When we first started working with the advisory group, we were looking at keeping the senior center in the existing space, in the Ann Hutchinson building, in the Ann Hutchinson extension. But as we brought the architects and contractors and engineers in, it, it quickly became apparent that the, the building, particularly the 1951 edition, is structurally unsound um, and that because of the, the metal um, structural members in the, uh, the historic school part, that doing a conversion, re uh, renovating it and, um, and creating housing within that same building but keeping the first floor for the senior center was going to be cost prohibitive and it would mean that the senior center would have to move out of that space for a while while we did the renovations on the interior and we heard hugely disruptive hu hugely disruptive and so we heard very loudly from the senior members of the advisory group that that was not what they that was not preferable that um, what they would prefer is to keep the doors open for the duration um, and and so that's how we came to the plan that you uh, that you just saw, which is right. you, we keep the senior center open and active in its existing location. We build a new building just to the north of it. Once that new building is constructed, the senior center moves directly into the new space, which is slightly larger than their existing space. Bonus. And and <laughs> and, and then. Um, Unfortunately, the, the 1951 edition is, is too far gone to save. And so then we would demolish that portion right. and work on saving the historic four-room schoolhouse. Right. Which and will become the condos that will be market rate condos. That's correct. The only way that I can see with construction pricing being what it is right now to save that historic school building, to do the renovation that it so desperately needs is to convert it to market rate condos yeah. because um, we're hoping that the sales proceeds from selling those condos will be enough to cover the construction costs related to rehabbing and converting to market rate condos and I want to be clear because we're talking about 50 to 54 units of affordable senior apartments in the new building but it the this the market rate condos are four to six condos maximum is what the architects right. have estimated just because of how it lays out and the size of that building it's separate and it's really to save this this historic building that's it and and right. you know i said it, it before the town council when i presented then it, if it doesn't work out if it, the condos just won't sell for enough to cover the cost of doing that renovation i'll just hand the keys back to the town i just don't want to be the person responsible for demolishing a, one of you know the remaining New England four-room schoolhouses and so you know that's that's what we're trying to do we're trying to save that um, and you know we don't have the construction pricing and we don't have you know there's so few condo sales in Portsmouth that getting comps on what they'll actually be worth is challenging so we don't know for sure if that's going to work but that's the plan all right all right we have just a few minutes left so I want to talk about this new space and some concerns that citizens have had mm -hmm. really around control yeah um, you know, my understanding from what you presented uh, was that the senior center, the nonprofit senior center that we have, is going to be controlling this new space, this activity space. It's connected to these apartments that you're developing, but is, is that correct? It's absolutely correct. In okay. fact, 
So the, the funding for this will primarily be um, tax credits, housing tax credits. And when you develop a housing tax credit development, there are investors, typically large banks, that come in and buy the tax credits to offset their tax liabilities. And that's how you get the majority of the equity that's necessary to develop one of these, um, these housing properties. Right. And so what the investor wants to see is that if you're going to create a community space like this, which is allowed according to those regulations, that you have a long established organization that is going to manage that space, that is going to provide the programming, is going to, you know, do everything that the senior center group has been doing at the senior center for all of this So nothing's time. changing, no, is, is we, that... We, is we, we need to enter into a long-term service agreement with the senior center to show the investors that this isn't going to be the property management company's responsibility. That, th that e because then we would have to budget to pay the property management company to be holding or to hire somebody else to be providing these um, programs and services to the, the residents. Right. And so they want to see that we have the senior center group on board. Um, and, and so I'm really happy that Cindy and Helen are entirely on board with this because this will become their new senior center. Right. You know, and that the whole board has voted unanimously support this because it will. The entire right. space that's proposed, um, you know, and it, it's all of the same spaces that they already have. It's the thrift shop, it's a fitness center, it's a library, it, you know, it's a dining room, it, it's a, a, yeah. a kitchen, the offices for the senior center staff. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the senior center in a new location, brand new. Um, so the senior center is running it and the town still owns it. The, yeah, the town owns a portion of it. Um, the current situation is that the town owns the Ann Hutchinson School and the property, and they've been leasing that school to the senior center for a dollar a year, and, ha and the town has been responsible for all of the maintenance and upkeep at the property, and the senior center has been paying the utilities. Under this proposal, the town will own about 2,500 square feet of the 9,000 square foot senior center space, through a senior center condo. And the reason for that is, as I pointed out, the vast majority of the spaces that the senior center needs are spaces we typically build for e in every senior housing development. But a thrift shop and, and office spaces for a separate organization, that's those separate. kinds, those are things that are not typically built in a senior housing development. And so that's why there's the separate senior center condo that will be owned by the town. And so just as we're going to be um, you know, acquiring the funding necessary to build all of the, the 54 affordable senior housing units and the 6,500 square feet of the remaining senior center space, the 2,500 square feet that will be owned by the town is also funding that we'll get uh, in order to do the entire development. Fantastic. I feel like we could go on and on, and there's so many things. I hope everyone will come out and vote. So thank you very much for joining us on Portsmouth this week. I have a very quick public service announcement for those of you. Um, the American Recovery Plan Act, or ARPA, was passed by Congress to provide the American people with resources to help recover from the effects of the pandemic. The town needs your help in determining where to invest ARPA funds. Information on ARPA is available on the town website, PortsmouthRI.com. We have a survey to gather citizen comments on ARPA investments, and we are going to be sharing the link to that survey. And hard copies of the survey are also available at the town hall. So please stop by, check that out. Please go and vote and weigh in on this very, very important referendum.